of our Lord Sri Aurobindo. Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says, spiritual experience is not a speculation, but the fact that there is a Godhead imminent within, behind this flawed and imperfect human nature. It is also a part of spiritual experience that there is something beyond in which this divinity or whatever other name you may give to it is above the contradiction offered to it by this world of disorder and ignorance. That is the meaning of transcendence. Whatever wide differences there may be between different ways of spiritual experience or whatever names may be put on these things, so much is fairly universal. If there were not these certitudes, there could be no assured spiritual life or endeavor. With our love and blessings, says our Lord Sri Aurobindo. Siddhi day, the day of victory. November 24th is a very significant day, especially for the devotees of Sri Aurobindo and the Divine Mother, as it marks the anniversary of the Siddhi day, the day of victory, the descent of Sri Krishna consciousness or the over-mental consciousness into the physical, which took place in the year 1926. This was the first decisive step towards the supramental manifestation, which took place later in 1956. About this event, our Lord Sri Aurobindo later wrote in a letter, the 24th November 1926 was the descent of Krishna into the physical. The descent of Krishna would mean the descent of the overmind Godhead, preparing, though not itself actually, the descent of supermind and Ananda. Krishna is the Anandamaya. He supports the evolution through the overmind leading it towards his Ananda. November 24th, 1926 is also the day when Sri Aurobindo Ashram came into being. It is therefore the planting of the seed which has now grown into a huge and mighty banyan tree with a presence all over the world. And this is what our Divine Mother once explained to the children when she was asked why she and our Lord Sri Aurobindo, why our Divine Mother and our Lord Sri Aurobindo created the ashram at Pondicherry. For that, our Divine Mother says, My child, that is why the ashram was created. Because in France, while I was always asking myself, how can one find the time to find oneself? How can one even find the time to understand how to become free? So I thought, then I thought, a place where material needs will be sufficiently provided for so that if one truly wants to become free, one can do so. And the ashram, Sri Aurobindo ashram was founded on this day, not on any other place, a place where people would have enough to live on so as to have time to think of the true thing. These are taken from the words from our Divine Mother's book on Thoughts and Aporisms, Volume 10 from the collective 
works of our divine mother page 198 siddhi day the descent of the over mind taken from the book title shri aurobindo for all ages a biography page 186 from nirod bharan's book nirod da writes by 1926 the number of inmates had increased to 25 they came mostly from bengal gujarat and the south while two Datta and Pavitra came from countries beyond the shores of India. The foundations of the ashram has begun to be laid. We come now to the great day, November 24th, 1926, known as the Day of Siddhi. For some time past, the disciples could see that Sri Aurobindo was more and more absorbed in his sadhana often he would be late in coming for the evening talks on one occasion he came at 2 o'clock in the morning the feeling grew among the disciples that some higher power would descend and the expectation was strengthened by the various references our lord shyorbindo made in his talks to its distinct possibility in a course of a talk on his birthday in 1925 shyorbindo mentioned that the universal conditions were more ready now for the coming down of the super mind he said firstly the knowledge of the physical world has increased so much that it is on the verge of breaking its own bounds secondly there is an attempt all over the world towards breaking all the veil between the outer and the inner mental the outer and the inner vital and even the outer and the inner physical men are becoming more psychic thirdly the vital is trying to lay its hold on the physical as it never did before also the world is becoming more united on the account of discoveries of modern science such a union is the condition for the highest truth coming down and it is also a difficulty fourthly the rise of persons who ill tremendously tremendous vital influence over large numbers of men these are some of the signs to show that the universal condition may be more ready now niroda writes on the other hand shri aurobindo also stressed that there was still great resistance in the earth atmosphere to the truth descending and said I find that the more the light and power are coming down the greater is the resistance you yourself can see that there is something pressing down you can also see that there is a tremendous resistance i am not doing an isolated yoga if i were seeking my own liberation and perfection my yoga would have been finished long ago says shri bindu as quoted by Niroda November 24th 1926 an eyewitness account let me return to November 24th 1926 there were 24 disciples who had the good fortune to be present on that momentous day Purani was one of them and I shall quote from his life of Sri Aurobindo to give you an eyewitness account from the beginning of November 1926 the pressure of the higher power 
began to be unbearable. Then, at last, the great day, the day for which the Divine Mother had been waiting for so many long years, arrived on the 24th November. The sun had almost set, and everyone was occupied with his own activity. Some had gone out to the seaside for a walk, when the Divine Mother sent word to all the disciples to assemble as soon as possible in the veranda where the usual meditation was held. It did not take long for the message to go round to all. By six o'clock, most of the disciples have gathered. It was becoming dark. In the veranda, on the wall, near Sri Aurobindo's door, just behind this chair, a silk, black silk curtain with gold lace work representing three Chinese dragons were hung. The three dragons were so represented that the tail of one reached up to the mouth of the other and the three of them covered the curtain from one end to end. We came to know afterwards that there is a prophecy in China that the truth will manifest itself on earth when the three dragons, the dragon of the earth, of the mid-region and of the sky, meet. Today, on 24th November, the truth was descending and the hanging of the curtain was significant. There was a deep silence in the atmosphere. After the disciples had gathered there, many saw an oceanic flood of light rushing down from above. Everyone felt a kind of pressure above his head. The whole atmosphere was surcharged with some electrical energy. In that silence, in that atmosphere, full of concentrated expectation and aspiration, in the electrically charged atmosphere, the usual, yet on this day, quite unusual. Tick was heard behind the door of the entrance. Expectation rose in a flood. And Lord Sri Aurobindo and the Divine Mother could be seen through the half-open door. The Divine Mother, with a gesture of her eyes, requested Sri Aurobindo to step out first. And our Lord Sri Aurobindo, with a similar gesture, suggested to her to do the same. With a slow, dignified step, the Divine Mother came out first, followed by our Lord Sri Aurobindo, with his majestic gait. The small table that used to be in front of Sri Aurobindo's chair was removed this day. The Divine Mother sat on a small stool to his right. Silence, absolute, living silence, not merely living, but overflowing with divinity. The meditation lasted about 45 minutes. After that, one by one, the disciples bowed to the Divine Mother. Our Divine Mother and our Lord Sri Aurobindo gave blessings to everyone. Whenever a disciple bowed to the Divine Mother, Sri Aurobindo's hand, Sri Aurobindo's right hand, came forward behind the Divine Mother's as if blessing him through the mother, after the blessings, in the same silence, there was a short meditation. In the interval of the silent meditation and blessings, many had distinct experiences. When all was over, they felt as if they had awakened from a divine dream. Then they felt the grandeur, the poetry and the absolute beauty of the occasion. 
It was not as if a handful of disciples were receiving blessings from their Supreme Master at the Divine Mother in one little corner of the earth. The significance of the occasion was far greater than that. It was certain that a higher consciousness had descended on earth. In that deep silence had burgeon forth like the sprout of a banyan tree, the beginning of a mighty spiritual world. This momentous occasion carried its significance to all in the divine dynamism of the silence, in its unearthly dignity and grandeur, and in the utter beauty of its every little act. The deep impress of divinity which everyone got was for him a priceless treasure. Sri Aurobindo and the Divine Mother went inside. The Realization on the Day of Victory What, you may ask, is the significance of the Siddhi Day, the Day of Victory as the Divine Mother called it? Well, mental explanation of a spiritual event, especially one of such magnitude, can never be really adequate as it is best to listen to Sri Aurobindo's own words. In a letter to me, he wrote, 24th November 1926 is the day when Sri Krishna descended into the body. His descent means the descent of the overmind God, which will prepare the descent of the supermind. To another disciple, our Lord Sri Aurobindo wrote, 24th was the descent of Krishna into the physical. Krishna is not the supramental light. The descent of Krishna would mean the descent of the overmind Godhead, preparing, though not itself actually, the descent of the supermind and ananda. Krishna is the Anandamaya. He supports the evolution through the O-mind, leading it towards the Ananda. Sri Aurobindo tells us between mind and supermind, there are various intermediate planes or ranges of consciousness, each with its characteristic light, power and knowledge. And the O-mind is the highest of these ranges. He said, that the overmind has to be reached and brought down before the supramental descent is at all possible. The descent of Krishna signified the fullness of the overmental realization, the descent of the divine into the very physical consciousness of Sri Aurobindo, and it was the culmination of all his previous realizations. It marked a decisive stage in his sadhana and paved the way for the supramental descent, the goal of Sri Aurobindo's integral yoga. Outwardly, too, there was a great change. Sri Aurobindo announced that he would go into complete seclusion to concentrate on his yoga. Henceforward, the Divine Mother would take up the direct charge of the sadhaks the inner sadhana as well as the outer organization. It is so that November 24th, 1926 is regarded as the day when Sri Aurobindo Ashram was founded. Experts from Sri Aurobindo All Ages, a biography, page 186. Ya Te Rutra
शिवा तनुरथो राह पापकाशिनी तस्मतमे मम शरण कया नस्तनुवा शंतमया गिरिशंता निजातशी तस्मतमे ततः परम ब्रह्म परम बृहतम यथा सर्वूतेषु गुण